know what happened to my magazine I had here? Uh, I think the man behind borrowed it. I waited six years on this plane. Six years. The whole world has changed in that time. Can I hope that love and a woman haven't? In one hour, we'll be in London. In one hour, I'll know. this time. You see, you've been in England before then. Mm -hmm. This passport doesn't show it. I was during the war. Oh, I see. I expect you'll find things have changed a bit now. Uh, yes, I guess they have. Is this right? You're a construction engineer? Yes. Right. Now, I've stamped your passport for three months. If you want to extend your visit or conduct any business, you'll have to apply to this address. Now, after you've had a word with the police, they'll clear you through customs. We're sorry for the May I have your passport, sir? Thank you. Franklin Pryor. Yes. Will you come this way? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, this is Mr. Pryor, Inspector Bragg. How do you do? Oh, yes, you were standing with a man when he was shot, weren't you? Yes, I uh, just asked him for a light for my cigarette. I heard a kind of a thud, and he folded up in front of me. Notice nothing else? No. Did you see him in the plane at all? Talk to him? Well, I think he was sitting in the tail section. I was up front. I see. Uh, I'll be with you in a moment. Didn't hear the murdered man mentioned by name. No. What was his name? I don't know. We had a passport, didn't we? Identification. Oh, yes, none of it checks. It was all expert forgery. We found a letter on him addressed to Kendall Brown. So temporarily we call him Kendall Brown. Yes. Mr. Pryor, I understand you tried to leave the building after your group had been quarantined. Uh, yes, I was expecting someone to meet me here. They didn't show up. I wanted to find out why. A lot of other people in a similar position. All the visitors were notified of the circumstances. Well, I'm sorry. Where can we uh, reach you if we want to talk to you again later? Well, I don't know where I'll be staying. I uh, wrote my friend to make a reservation for me in a hotel, but, uh, <laughs> as I was saying, a friend didn't show up. Well, can we get hold of you through your friend's address? 
Well, I guess so. Maybe I have his name? Her name is uh, Miss French. That's uh, number seven, Melvin Terrace. Seven? M-A-L-V-E-R-N. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Park. You just go through there. The customers will look after you. I, uh, wonder if I can make that phone call first, please, huh? Yeah. You can use that one over there. Just lift the receiver and give the operator the number you want. What were you saying, Jim? I think so. Hello, would you give me flight from 5483, please? 5483. I've checked the photograph taken from the dead man's pocket. Hmm? It was taken at a bad angle as far as the number plate's concerned. The only thing that we can be certain of is the make of the car. Any idea who the girl is? No, sir. I wish I did. I see what you mean. Well, this won't help us to find out who Kendall Brown was. Well, sir, we've checked the records, but no such person seems to exist. Thank you. That's all we needed to make this case perfectly simple. All right, you can go. Don't you want to know the address? What address? Uh, the house in the background. It's uh, South Hill Street, Chelsea. Not far from the river. You sure? Oh, yes, sir. The architecture is unmistakably Edwardian, with alterations. They're mostly flats nowadays, but this one here is number 39. 39. All right, thank you. Cameron, come on. Where are we going, sir? South Hill Street. I'll try it again for you, please, huh? There should be somebody there. Hello, Miss French's residence. Hello, Miss French there? No, I'm sorry, she's not. Would you know if she went to the airport this morning? Did she leave any message? Or will you be there for a while? No, I see. Well, thanks. Sorry to trouble you, madam. We're from Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Just making a few inquiries. We hoped you might be able to help us. Oh, yes. Do you recognize that lady? Yes. Does she live here? No, but she used to be a visitor about a year ago. Do you know her name? I'm afraid I don't. You haven't seen her recently? Well, as a matter of fact, she was here twice this morning. Oh? What for? She's wanting to see Mr. Brown. Mr. Kendall Brown? Yes. He's got a room on the first floor. I see. Well, do you mind if we take a look? No, come inside. Excuse me. <clears throat> Get inside. Will you follow me, please? He only has the one room. Keeps it pretty tidy, doesn't it? Oh, Mr. Brown's a model lodger. Theatrical? No, not that I know. How long has he been with you? Oh, he's been about 18 months now. Nothing wrong, I hope. Do you know much about him? No. Might be a traveler. He's been away this last week, expected back today. Married? I don't think so. But, um... Yes? Well, the lady in that photograph you showed me, she's been here quite a lot. But that's almost a year ago. Do you know anything about her? I'm afraid I don't. And you don't know her name? No, I'm sorry. 
I don't think Mr. Brown would like you going through his things. That's all right, Mrs. Brown. This Helene, who's she? I don't know. I never was one for shows. All right, I don't think we need to keep you any longer. We'll just take a look around. Very good. I suppose it's all right. Oh, I don't think there's much we can do here. This Kendall Brown seems to be too anonymous to be natural. What do you think of this, sir? Hmm? Helene Castle. All my love forever, Helene. Do you think that's a clue to follow up, sir? Pretty flimsy one. I'd say very flimsy, sir. Inspector, look at this. What? Isn't that the car in the photograph? He hasn't come back yet. The police are in his room now. They ask about you. The police? Would you like to have a word? No. Come on, Cameron. Quick, come on. Did you come down the hall, Miss French? You have a visitor. Go upstairs, Cynthia. In fact, I haven't even got a hotel. Oh. Sarah. I can't tell you what I felt when I got your first letter. Do you know it went through three changes of address? So many things have happened since you left. So many. But you look just wonderful. Just as big and strong and as attractive. <laughs> You know that this is the first time I've seen you out of uniform. Same here. Hi, Captain. <laughs> At ease, Sergeant. Besides acting, I mean, do you still fly? Oh, just occasionally. You still race? 
Well, not much with planes now. I got interested in speedboats a little while ago. I bought myself a motor launch. What a girl. You know, uh, I'm getting older. I doubt if I'll be able to keep up with a sweet girl anymore. Oh, I'm much more sensible about it now. From planes to cars to boats, it's slowing up, don't you think? I uh, see you're still the same old dead I Get quite a few more new cups here. You know, the fellas in the outfit, uh, they used to kid me about going around with a girl who could outshoot Annie Oakley. <laughs> don't worry, darling. I haven't shot one of my boyfriends for at least a couple of years now. Hey, speaking of shooting, you know what happened out at the airport this morning? The fellow was shot and killed just after we got off the plane. Were you there? Was I? I asked him for a light for my cigarette just before he got hit. Standing right next to him. You want to hear all the gory details? No, thank you. I've already read them in the papers. Yeah, I'll say Scotland Yard was there. And I think it was done from a distance by a sniper of some kind, huh? Hey, it must have been. We better get going. Hey, beautiful. Snap into it, huh? After we find me a hotel, I want to take you to that uh, little Greek restaurant in Soho that we both used to like so much. You've seen no living man do that only one surviving wizard can do. That I hardly need to add is me. And here's a chest with another thing inside. I show it thus. And close it thus. A magic pass. Hey presto. And what do we see? Me. I'm tightly tied in this attitude, undignified. In the process, I've grown fond of this weird necromancer with a beard and a wand. But oh, is he going to notice me when he's so busy doing what comes supernaturally? Hey, presto! All he ever said to me is, Hey, presto! Folks go wild and applause. I have my dreams, but it seems I'm completely ignored. Yes? Is Miss Castle in the theatre? Well, yes, but they don't allow visitors uh, We're during the show. Uh, Scotland Yard. Oh. oh, Scotland Yard. And, uh, you want to see Miss Castle? Did you? Well, she's, uh, she's just beginning her act. Is there somewhere we could wait? Uh, yes. Uh, Tommy. Yes? Show these two gentlemen from Scotland Yard into the wings, will you? They want to see Miss Castle. Sure. Follow me, gentlemen. Scotland Yard. Nobody got killed, did they? Yes. I was poor and I was down When a road show blew into town They needed an assistant, I heard I went and told this mystical jerk I'd give my own right down for the work And he took me at my word hey, All she ever said to me is Hey, presto, she's so formal and smart Always polite, but you might think he hadn't got a heart. All he ever says to me is, hey, presto, I keep up in disgust. Find me a soul with a wholesome capacity for love. With all our secrets to share, we'd make a wonderful pair, a perfect bow. And this. But if he may be his wife, he'd spend the rest of his life impaling broadswords through my middle. All she ever says to me is, hey, 
favorite, oh, my help, a king and sick. Each little trick must be slick, so I'm quick to obey. Presto, and I'm here. Watch her disappear. Oh, Helene, these two men want to see you. Later, for me. But they're from Scotland Yard. Just one minute. Quite all right. We enjoyed watching your act. Oh, good. This is my partner, Harvin the Great. How do you do? How do you do? These gentlemen are from Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Uh, why, is anything wrong? I don't know. No, we just want to talk to Miss Carson. I'll see you later. My dressing room is this way. Want to come along? Thank you. Thank you. about Ken. I read the papers. You knew him then? I'm his wife. But don't let that worry you. Ken and I have been separated for so long that we were almost on speaking terms again. I see. How long had you been separated? Oh, about three years. We saw each other sometimes. We finally became quite civilized about our differences. In fact, he came to the show a few weeks back. You don't mind if I change? Oh, no, no, no. Do. Do. We are not in the way. It's all right. I've done this before in public. Without the screen. Quite. You don't know what your husband's been doing lately, I suppose. No. Do you know anyone who... who might have wanted to get him out of the way? No, but I'm not surprised that he should have ended up like this. He got a taste for excitement when he was a pilot. He did what we show people call a double act. His partner was trouble. But you can't tell us what sort of trouble it was this time. If I had to guess, I'd say the wrong man's wife. Oh, I guess was it. Do you, um, do you happen to recognize this lady? Yes, that's his latest. What's her name? Uh, Pauline French. Pauline French, the actress. Who did I hear mention that name recently? Oh, you know her. She's all the time in the papers. Rides, shoots, skis, flies, anything that moves fast and makes a lot of noise. Did you find this on Ken? Yes. I see. From what you say about your husband, those two must have got on well together. Well. Very well. Well, thank you, Mrs. Brown. My name's Anne Castle. I beg your pardon, Miss Castle. You've been a great help. Oh, there's just one thing. They'll want to identify the body. I imagine as you're his wife, they'll want to get in touch with you shortly. Well, you can always get me through the theater. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, you can do what you like. You're young. I'm going to bed. What about Pauline French? She'll keep till tomorrow. Find her all right, sir? Yes, thank you. Good night, gentlemen. Good Well, you've seen 
seen everything from Land's End to John O'Groats. What's next? Anything I say? Anything you say, darling. It's your day. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's just stay in the Thames until we hit the sea. We'll cross the Channel, land on the coast of France, build ourselves a little hut out of driftwood, spend the rest of our lives alone together. No city, no people, and no past. Just us. What a wonderful, beautiful dream. You know, this is a pretty sturdy boat. I bet you could cross the Channel on this. Don't tell me that you've never tried it. What do you mean? I mean, I know Pauline French. If nothing stops her, she goes. <laughs> Uh-oh. What's the matter? No petrol. We've been doing too much sightseeing. I knew we should have filled her up before we left. Well, the worst that can happen is that we just keep on drifting. Personally, I can't imagine a better way to spend my time. I think I'd better call someone from the shore. Ahoy! Hello. Hello there. What's wrong, Miss French? Trouble? Yes, we ran out of petrol. Do you think you could tow us in? Certainly, Miss French. Thank you. Well, that's all right. We'll be in in a minute. You knew him, huh? Yes, he works for the people who look after my boat over there. Good thing we didn't drift too long. I've got a lot to do for the party tonight. Oh, well, that's another thing. I don't no, understand no, why... I'm sorry. It's something I arranged weeks ago. Anyway, it'll give you a chance to meet some of my glamorous leading men. Yes, I'd love that. <laughs> anyway, I want to be able to show you. You mean that? Dry dock. I think I'll overhaul and put her up for sale. Saw your boat, huh? Yes, it's really much more trouble than it's worth. Looks like a pub. They look out for me. It's pretty good. Hey, how about a drink? No, really, I must get back. Hello, Miss French. Saw the boy tow you in up the river. Yes, we ran out of fuel. Well, come and refuel in here. Have a bitter on the house. We're in a terrible hurry. Oh, Jonas, I want you to meet a very good friend of mine from America, Mr. Pryor. From America? Pleased to meet you, Mr. Pryor. Very pleased indeed. Can I have a word with you in private just for a minute? Excuse us. Frank, I have to see someone inside for me. Okay. Come inside, Mr. Pryor. Come in and have a quick one. No need to wait out there. Hello, Miss French. We've missed you, dear. Yes, I've been very busy. Wasn't it horrible news? Yes. Could I have a whiskey, please? Yes, dear. What would you like, Frank? I have the same, yes. That you are. Keep mine warm for me, will you? I'll be back in a minute. American? That's right. You can always tell. You can. French pretty well known, isn't she? Yeah. She's a lovely person. They take care of a launch back there. You get all sorts here. All the common old river characters. Then the ladies and gentlemen, like Miss French, who keep their boats with us. <laughs> Excuse me.
sorry about that, darling. Just some trouble about the boat. What made you decide to sell it all of a sudden? I just had enough of it, I guess. What's it, Alan? Miss Ed, you put in the old shop for say. Yes. Is it on account of what happened to him? No, of course not. I don't think I want this. Do you mind if we go, Frank? All right. Right in the airport, too, in front of all those people. Shocking you. Shocking. You know... The uh, barmaid in there was... We must get a taxi. She was talking about Kendall Brown, wasn't she? Yes. You knew him then, didn't you? Yes. Why didn't you mention this to me yesterday? Was there any need? You must have known him pretty well. You came here quite often with him, didn't you? Didn't you? That's right. Is that what's been bothering you? Is that what you're holding back? Look, Frank, you left here six years ago. Since then, I've lived my own life. No strings, no ties. It's just that if there's anything wrong, I want to help. There's nothing wrong, and I don't want any help. I just want to be left alone. Don't you understand that? I just want to be left alone. Taxi. Cynthia, please, do mind. Don't keep the phone occupied. I want to use it. Oh, certainly, ma'am. I'm just finishing. I'll see you tomorrow, George. Thank you. Have we got enough glasses and drinks and everything? Yes, ma'am. Good. Oh, and would you bring me up one of your headache powders, please? Certainly. Put me through to Mr. Pryor's room, please. Oh, yes. Yes, I see. Yes, I would like to leave a message. Ask him to ring Miss French as soon as he comes in. Yes. Thank you. Not there, ma'am. Miss French? Yes? Inspector Braddock, Scotland Yard. Oh. Yes? May we come in? Well... All right. Thank you. I... I hope it won't take too long. I'm expecting rather a lot of people. So I see. Well, I'll try and make it as brief as possible. We would have chosen yesterday, but you were in such a hurry. What do you mean? Did you know Kendall Brown? Yes. You've read the papers? 
Yes. You were great friends, weren't you? I knew him. But, uh, quite well, hmm? Quite well. Did you often visit him? Yesterday was the first time in a long while. Who took this photograph, Miss Fletcher? He did. Where did you find this? It was found on the dead man. Oh. I didn't think he still carried it around with him. Funnily enough, it's the only picture I've ever liked of myself. He gave me the negative. Put it in large. Yes. It is very good. Are you sure that you haven't had anything to do with Kendall Brown recently? No. We met occasionally to have a drink, but that was just for old times' sake. But you had some important business to discuss with him yesterday, didn't you? You called on him three times. Three times? The landlady says you called twice before we arrived. The third time you came, you found we were there. You left rather fast. I felt lonely. I wanted to see someone, so I went to him. Is that all? Yes, that is all. Miss French, if you think very hard and try to help us, perhaps we in turn could help you. In what way? Oh, I don't know. We have been known to be helpful to some people. This is a murder case, Miss French. All right, Inspector, I'll, I'll try and help you, but just at this moment I am in a hurry. I've got people coming and I have a headache. If only you could have come earlier. We tried earlier. You were out all day. Were you with Franklin Pryor? How do you know? Have I been followed? No, Miss French. Perhaps it's a curious coincidence. Mr. Pryor was at the airport at the time of the shooting. He gave us your address to contact him. It was a coincidence, wasn't it? Yes. He's a friend of mine, a visitor. And I would appreciate it very much if he were not involved in any of this. I understand. But, uh, just in case we do want to contact him, is this still his address? No, he has a hotel now, the Sussex. But you won't... No, we won't. I tell you what, Miss French, you think over everything you can tonight, and then you can call us tomorrow morning. Perhaps you'll have thought of something by then. Will that be all right? Yes, Inspector, I'll... I'll call you tomorrow. Good. May we have the... Thank you, Miss French. Good day. Thank you. Is this the young one, ma'am? What is the hazy there? <laughs> something wrong, ma'am. Did I say something? Oh, being silly. The people will be here in a minute. Come, we must hurry. We've got a lot to do. How's your do, Mr. Pryor? Hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. Come in, won't you? Take a seat. You remember Cameron, don't you? Yes, hello. Good afternoon, sir. Well, now, we'll be brief, Mr. Pryor. We want to talk to you about Pauline French. We hope you'll cooperate. Well, I'll try. Let's start from yesterday morning at the airport. 
I'd like to go into this matter of a somewhat unusual coincidence. I presume that the person you expected to meet you there was Miss French. Is that presumption correct? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, she failed to arrive. She didn't. I take it you know that Miss French was on intimate terms with Kendall Brown, and that that connection remained unbroken until yesterday. Oh? Well. It's possible that Miss French was at the airport, you know, and you didn't see her. You realize that? No, I didn't realize that. Kendall Brown was shot by an expert at a considerable distance. You know that Miss French is very good with a rifle, don't you? Yes. We have to think of everything. For instance, we have to ask ourselves whether it was a simple coincidence that you stopped Kendall Brown to get a light for your cigarette just by chance, or whether that was a ruse to keep him still for a few moments so that he'd be a better target. That's absurd. It probably is. That's just the sort of thing one thinks about on this kind of job, isn't it, sir? Do you know any of Miss French's friends or acquaintances? I haven't seen Miss French for six years. Uh, until yesterday. I'm afraid I won't be able to help you gentlemen very much. The cartridge case of the bullet that killed Kendall Brown was found in the grounds of the airport. Now, I'm going to tell you something rather curious, Mr. Pryor. Near that cartridge case was a number of footprints which showed an uneven distribution of weight. And associated with them was a series of indentations in the ground which could have been caused by a walking stick or a crutch. That seems to ring a bell, Mr. Pryor. Uh, no, I, uh, I, I was just curious. Uh, what do you make of it? During your past two days with Miss French, did you see or did you hear her mention any person of her acquaintance who was crippled or who might have used some such walking aid? Well, uh, as a matter of fact... Oh. Hello. The man we had covering Kendall Brown's house has picked up a taxi driver called Henry Stone. What was he doing? Waiting for the dead man. You better bring him up. I'll be right down. Huh? Oh, she is? Yeah, I'll be right along. Hmm? Take that into forensic on your way back. See? The wheels never stop. Well, Mr. Pry, you were saying? Well, yes, I was saying, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Miss French is uh, giving a party later on this afternoon so that I might meet some of her friends. If uh, someone shows up using a crutch, uh, I'll let you know. Good. Do you know anything about Kendall Brown, who he was? No. He's a man with a very bad record. I don't like to say this, but it doesn't speak too well for Miss French that she had any connection with him whatsoever. His police history is a very nasty one. There are charges against him for smuggling, Charges for bigamy, in fact, all sorts of trouble with women. You're a visitor to this country, Mr. Pryor. We want you to enjoy your stay. If you could be persuaded not to have too much to do with Miss French until this matter's cleared up, I think you might avoid a lot of difficulty. All right, thank you. Oh, excuse me, my lord. Mr. Stone? Yes, sir? I understand you were outside number 39 South Hill Street. It's a regular call of mine, sir. You could have knocked me down when the copper told me he was a goner. Why were you so surprised? Well, it was fit enough a couple of weeks ago. I understand it was all in the papers, too. You drove him a couple of weeks ago? I drove him nearly every week, sir. See, like, I take him down to the river and then bring him back again. He's a shipping man or something, does a lot of his business down at the Spread Eagle. Where? Uh, it's a little pub down on the river, sir. Do you happen to keep a record of these trips? Oh, yes, I've, uh, I've got them here, I think, sir. Yes, this is it. Yes, there we are. I see you've got today's date here, Mr. Stone. Uh, yes, that's right, sir. I was to take him today to the Spread Eagle. I see. Would you like to make up your fare to the Spread Eagle? Well, I wouldn't mind, you know. Good. You can take us down there and show us around. Yes, thank you. Wait here for a minute. Yes, thank you. Well, Mr. Pryor, I think that's all for you. We've checked you very thoroughly. We know you're all right, but we'd like you to stay that way. London's a big and interesting city. Why not look at it on your own for a bit? Hmm? Yes, sure, Mr. Leonard. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Evans. 
Franklin Pryor's leaving the building. Better put a man on him. Where's Cameron? Well, tell him to get rid of her. We've got a job to do. <laughs> Oh, oh, Pauline, thanks so much for the invitation. I said, did you hear about Baby here? She's got the part. Oh, publicity so far. My own, of course. When do you start rehearsals, Pauline? I don't know. George keeps changing his mind. Look, why don't you two go and speak to those producers, eh? Do yourself some good. Hmm? Cynthia, I have to go out now, and I don't know for how long. Right now, ma'am? Yes, nobody will notice. Let them all have as much to drink as they want. What if Mr. Pryor calls? I don't think he will. Go fair, use your two hands. Leave me alone, I'll do it my own way. I don't mind about your legs, but I'm madly short of heart. Keep going, you've got to get out of here. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Pryor, I'm so glad you came. Miss French is just going out. Where is she? Upstairs in her bedroom. You did your phone. I did this when I was four years old. Oh, you're nice. Save my life. Anytime. Oh, my hero. Come on, old chap. That's mine. We'll take better care of it. Stop, fella. You should have let her fall. <laughs> Darling, I've been... What's wrong? My police are scored. I have to get out of here. Where are you going? Oh, darling, I... I tried to telephone you this afternoon to explain. Frank, I must ask you, please don't try to stop me now. Go ahead. Doesn't make much difference whether I stop you or not anyway. The police will do that. What for? Because they think you're involved with the murder of Kendall Brown. That's fantastic. Is it? The police are at the Spread Eagle right now. That man that you were talking with her today, the one who walks with a crutch, they've got linked with the actual shooting. How do you know all this? I had a special invitation to Scotland Yard. They advised me to stay away from you if I wanted to keep out of trouble. Frank, please. I've waited too long and come too far. You've got to tell me what this is all about. I... What do you want to know? I want to know what you're hiding from me. What's separating us? Who is this Kendall Brown? Why was he killed? What have you got to do with it? And this, this living man, who is he? I can't. I can't. Yes, you can. You can. Don't you understand? I don't care what you've done in the past. The important thing is us. Now, Pauline, I'm not going to let you shut yourself off from me any longer. Pauline. I was desperately alone. I wanted to forget. Nothing was too wild or too crazy to try, including Kendall Brown. He was attractive and mysterious, and, and I fell for him. It's as simple as that. Is that it? No, there was more. We did dangerous and, I thought, exciting things together. We used my launch to pick up contraband from ships in the channel. I did the navigating and I didn't ask questions. All seemed to be part of the thrill that I needed. But I didn't know how many other things, apart from our petty smuggling, he was involved in. 
Oh, how rotten he was. Until later. When I found out, I... I left him. That was a year ago. Go on. Well, he didn't want it that way. Foolishly, I'd written letters that talked of everything we'd done together. He used those letters to get money from me. Then two weeks ago, he said I could have them all back for 2,000 pounds. That was where I was going to collect them when I met the police. Well, then your problem's over. He's dead. Yes. But he has a wife, Helene Castle, a singer. Now she has the letters, and she wants the money. She was the one who sent the man to the pub to find me this morning. My maid told her we'd gone to the river. The limping man? Yes. I don't know what all the fuss about him is. He's only the stage doorkeeper at the theater where she works. That's where I've got to go now. To buy back my past. All sounds very sordid and ugly, doesn't it? That's the way it is, Frank. Blackmailing can go on and on, you know. Why don't you go to the police? Wouldn't it be better that way? No, Frank. If those letters were published, don't you see what it would mean? Horrible publicity. Humiliation. Perhaps even jail. I could never work again. I couldn't face anyone. Even you. Especially you. That's why I must go through with this. There's no other way. No other. Isn't there any way out of this building besides the front entrance? Yes, I'm going down through the kitchen to use the fire escape. I'm going with you. No, Frank, you're not getting involved in this. No, no. Frank, please. Come on. What are we going to do? Okay, Joe, come on, get on with it. Okay, uh, you go to bed and uh, go to sleep, huh? And we won't breathe a word of it to your mother. You don't have to stand here, you know. There's some seats over there. Um, no, thank you. Uh, no, thanks. Just... Thanks. 
You missed a bit. Well, Melody Jones went to the um, nightclub in his apartment. The diplomat was there. And he was dead. Oh. He had a knife in his neck. Um, Brewster, the, the other fellow, left a um, tobacco tin. That's the only clue they've got so far. And that's where we are now. Brewster. Why, he was the other chap who came in first. Mm. Well, thanks. Did anyone come in here just now? Why, yes, lots of people. Young couple, Miss Bentley and Mazenette next door. French, French, French. Oh, she is. Still here? Yes, she's sitting there. I'm sure she can't come in. Where'd they go? Police? The people who were sitting here. In the, in the kitchen. Did anyone come down here? I didn't see anyone, sir. Uh, that man, there. Do you work here? Yes, sir. The a couple of strangers passed through just now. No, sir. I just came down to put this car away. Is that all right? Yes, yeah, all right. <laughs> Don't you? Yes. Have you got what you're supposed to give me? 
Yes, in here. Where are we? That's the stage. Are you afraid? What is that? The great Pauline French is frightened. That's a trap for the magician. You wait here, I'll be back. It's quite easy for me to do this because we've been connected with the rope business one way and the other for so many, many years. There was an ancestor of mine, they showed him a rope trick. He won't be here tonight. He's hanging around somewhere, I guess. Magic word, Mahina Mahabam Huba. You see, we've done it again. I'll do it again. Take me across the channel in your launch. 
when we get to the other side, you can give me the money and I'll give you the letters. And then I'll be out of your life altogether. That's, that's easy, isn't it? You don't understand. Yes, but I do. You're an actress with a career. You, you want to build up a life for yourself. Maybe with, with some nice, clean, living man who doesn't know too much about, about your past with me. You know, Pauline, your letters were wonderful to me. But everybody mightn't look at them that way. You were too frank, too uninhibited, and too good a writer. And then our little escapades on the river. And probably the customs officials wouldn't understand those. You see, I've got nothing to lose. I don't care if they do come out. So I've had sets of photostats made. An original to the police, a copy to the newspapers. They'll be posted tonight if anything unfortunate happens to me. But if you help me get across the channel, I'll give you all your letters when we get to the other side. Unless, of course, you want to stay with your continent. <laughs> we'll forget that part. You leave me on the coast of France and your future is assured. Oh, it's worth it, isn't it? It's your whole future. I'm oh, sorry, sir. I only just come on. Well, Harleen Castle, I wonder if I could talk. Sir? The gentleman wants to see Miss Castle. I can't find her myself. It's not in the dressing room. Haven't you seen her? No, sir. Well, it's very important. I've got to find her. You've got to find her. What about me? Did you want in two minutes? Yes? You are looking for me? Where have you been? Uh, my name's Pryor. Miss French asked me to meet her. Who? Pauline French. Where is she? I don't know what you're talking about. Let me go. Now, please, sir. I know she was here, and I know what she came for. Now, where is she? I don't know you. Will you send the commissioner to the stage door at once, please? You can't stop the show. You're staying here until I get an answer. Fire. Who do you want? It's all right. I can see him. People aren't allowed backstage like this. Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Thank God you are here, Inspector. This man is mad. He's holding up the show. I have to get on the stage. Please, Inspector, the show. Leave it alone, Pryor. Listen, Inspector. No, you listen to me, Pryor. I want you to keep out of this. You've distracted an arrest already. Miss Pauline French. Ask her, she knows. Miss Carson? I don't know where she is, but I have to get on the stage. Can I see you after the curtain? Please, Inspector, the show. I'm telling you she knows. All right, Miss Carson, go ahead. And hurry, hurry, please. You mind if we wait in the wings? Oh, anywhere, anywhere, Inspector, but just keep quiet. No, Pryor. You're coming with us. Uh, you stay at the stage door. You've got a couple of men to the front? Yes, sir. All right, get them round there. Get out of here. You know where to bring her. But I'm missing my curtain. Stay with her. And 
thought of it in a few minutes. Wasting time, you know. Mr. Pryor, you may think you're helping us, but we don't. What's the hold? Miss Castle should be back on stage by now. Miss Castle didn't go to her dressing room, sir. The finale costume's still there. Who's on the stage door? I am. Well, where's the stage door, man? He took his crutch and went downstairs. Did you say crutch? Yes, he's got a bad leg. He always uses one. The living man. Take the curtain up. Curtain! <laughs> I think this is your living man. In a bad way. Teddy bear. Are you all right? You know how this happened? Yes. She's lying. We were together. We didn't see anything. Kendall Brown's alive. He did it. She doesn't know what she's talking about. He's dead. I identified him. When we check an idol, we don't rely on one person. That's why we're here. You better get an ambulance with this man. All right, Cameron. Come on, take him up onto the stage. Yes, sir. and tell him to stop anyone with a limp. Yes, sir. You get on stage for the hour. Seatbelt, please. It's time to land now. You fasten your seatbelt, please. You fasten your seatbelt, please. Oh. No, she hasn't. Don't worry about it. Have a good time in London. 